Hello and welcome to the Flory Models Friday Roundup show with you on the 26th of uh, January 2022. Almost the first month out of the way and I must admit it has been a hell of a month. It's been very, very busy. To be honest, it's one of those crazy weeks at the moment, especially this week. So, you know, it's tax time of year. It's VAT time of year. To be honest, I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment and then trying to push on with all of this as well. So it's just been one of those really, really incredibly busy weeks. But we still have got quite a lot done. So starting off with... Uh, all started on Monday where we carried on with part two of our F-18 uh, Hornet build. So this is the Revel build and to be honest it was really where we started to you know get things sorted and work out what's going on and stuff like that. So basically we painted up the intakes, we did the compressor blades and we did some of the engine nozzles as you see going through. We got the afterburner rings uh, installed, painted up and sort of weathered in as you can see. Just get the basics of that all in there and then it was just a case of getting it clamped together. Now actually this was pretty good. No no problems at all getting it together once you manage to get those compressor blades all in and things like that so that basically was fine then the headaches came back and started to haunt us so we had a few little fit issues and things like that trying to get the wheel wells all sorted but eventually we got all of those in so that was absolutely fine and then it was just a case of going around gluing it all and getting it somewhat together then we looked at uh, the ECS pipes so again I think it was a worthy upgrade to do this one and looking at you know obviously the quickest and easiest way to do it so we decided to cut them off and reseat them and then we were looking at some of the seam moulds in this once we'd start to get it together and some of the little filler jobs and things we're going to have to do to take care of it and that basically gets us to where you are now and as you can see here it's not looking too bad to be honest so as you can see it's all in here we've managed to sandwich in there it's got filler on this so it just needs to be sanded back and cleaned back now and everything else now a lot has been said about this and I've had as I said before on the Tuesday show um, I had a few negative comments to say it you know obviously we always get negative comments and things like that it's par for the hobby but you know this is one of those things people were sort of um, calling me out really by saying about if it's such a bad kit why are you giving Revel the time to show it and everything else and again you know I can see the two points of view from this one it's one of those ones where technically yes this kit should never have ever been released how Revel have got the nerve to release technically what is a fundamentally flawed kit um, but they do give you the tools to correct it it tells you where it needs to be changed uh, and it tells you where it needs filler and all things like that so you know it is that thing they've done the best job with what they can and I know there's lots of different you know rumors going around about how this kit is out how it got released so forth and so on uh, and the reasons it hasn't been changed I don't know I haven't spoken to Revel directly they haven't contacted me to explain it or anything else like that so what I'm basically trying to do is make the best out of what we've got in front of us and I was just explaining really that do you know what at the end of the day it's a challenge and I enjoy that in this hobby and I said it's not for everybody a lot of people just love to do an out of the box build chuck it together and they move on to the next build I like the thing where it's not going together working out why it's not how can we fix it and then obviously you know with the tools and the equipment we got here what's going to be the best way of tackling it does it mean sand it down do we shim it do we fill it do you know whichever way it is I do enjoy that and to be honest I have to say now as long as the front end goes together and I have no reason to see it won't but it's now looking really really good uh, and it's solid you know this thing doesn't rattle there's no dodgy parts or anything else and again we had to go in and you'll see on Monday's part lots of filler work down in these intakes uh, so we've used basically uh, cement filler I'm going to call it super glue and talcum powder uh, to do it and um, it's worked fantastically just needs a little bit of clean up now and all the rest of it but I've already started doing things like tail planes we've got those done I've got down in there we've also done some work on the cockpit and for the front end of it so I should think now by next week this thing will be together and we'll be into the painting stage so forth and so on so I know I've been bashing it and you know giving it a hard time but stick with me on this one it is a fun one there's lots you can learn from it or hopefully you'll be able to learn from it and to be honest with you I'm enjoying it and at the end of the day like I was saying I don't want to you know sort of preaching here but you know you're the modeler so it should be what you want I'm enjoying this that's why I'm building it so and I know it's not for everybody but at the end of the day if it's not for you then just don't do it at least you now know how bad it is but if you are following along and I know a few of you are it is that thing now is that you can just watch me and then go right okay so that's there I need to take care of that you might have a totally different approach to it of how you would go around and fix some of these problems but I've done the way I've done it and it seems to be working so far so really are enjoying it so anyway that was up with you on uh 
Monday. That was part two of that particular build in there. So that was uh, working on the Hornet on Tuesday. And as I say, you can go off, just click it down on there and that take you off to the actual video build of that one. And as I say, lots still to come on that particular build. And then obviously on Tuesday, it's my vlog show. So I do it like a vlog now. So I use my other little handheld camera and we were talking about things. And this was what started somewhat of a few comments flying around about my sort of comments about how, okay, it's a bit of a challenging build and all the rest of it. But actually it's one of those things. You get different types of modelers out there. The ones who like shake and bake kits, just put it together and finish it. And you get other people who like to sort of, you know, have a, a bit of a challenge and go right the way through it. Uh, and that's really what we're talking about in that show. So it's not designed to sort of upset anyone or preach to anybody of how your modeling should be but really it was just trying to sort of point out and I had a few comments about it and it was me just having my view of it if you like uh, and things like that so again it's one of those things the great thing about this hobby is that you can build a kit straight out of the box and I do it all the time you know you look at any of my video builds you'll see lots of out of the box builds other ones are quite challenging and like I said before it was that thing where if I remember some of my most challenging builds like the VC10 the bear bomber and things like that I can pretty much remember every step of the build. Yet other kits, like for instance the Tamiya Zero, which I only did last year, I can, can't really remember building it because it, it just went together. It flowed. There was no problems with that kit whatsoever. You know, we added uh, a Quinta Studios cockpit set to it, but the rest of it is all out of the box and it just absolutely flowed. No problem at all. So it's not very memorable. It doesn't make it a bad kit. Don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic kit and everyone should build one, but it's just from a challenge point of view. I think you always remember those more challenging kits and hopefully you think of them as more of a you know a, it's a bit of a mountain you've climbed it you've conquered it uh, so when you look back at it and you, you have those memories of how bad that was uh, and some of the challenges you had with it um, and I think that's why you have a greater appreciation you know and you think do you know what it was a really bad kit but actually it looked really nice now and I'm glad I've done it whereas obviously if you're looking at an out of the box build you haven't had that you know you still had oh, it's a beautiful kit it's turned out amazingly well and i love it but you haven't had that sort of reminisce thing about how bad it was but actually it was okay you know so that's really all i was talking about uh on the actual uh, tuesday show down in there Anyway, you can go off and see that one and hear me ranting on about it. Uh, PM show on the Wednesday. <laughs> we had lots of comments about what's Matt doing. Then obviously you saw it uh, and then it makes a little bit more sense. But at the time, everyone's saying, what's wrong with Matt? Uh, but yes, we, we it was one of those shows. It didn't flow, put it like that. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's why I left that one in. But anyway, it's the usual PM show. So we were talking about all things kits, uh, what's come in, what's go out through the PM store and everything else like that. So uh, you can catch up with all the uh, comings and goings at the PM store and then obviously Matt put up part four of the uh, Dragon build so this is the 135th scale M4 A3 Sherman and he was doing the decalim and for someone who's only got like 10 decals on this kit it not take him a while as I say it's one of those ones it's really nice to see people struggling in some ways and uh, like I was saying to Matt it's one of those things some of the things he says I know as I say it as well so he was saying in this particular one about don't panic take your time keep calm it'll be okay because he did have a bit of trouble with that number three on there and uh, yeah I did say to him I say that as well when I'm panicking it's almost like you're telling yourself don't panic it'll be all right just keep going anyway he did conquer it and it is looking absolutely beautiful now it's looking really really good he's almost finished it so uh, it's just a few little bits and pieces to get, uh, get that one finished off so uh, we'll get more of that next week when he gets up with uh, part five but you can see Matt's one obviously you can go over to the uh, PM YouTube channel over here as well just uh, click down in there you can subscribe and then you can watch it direct as well but you can see it obviously on the Flory model site last night it was the live show so again topical debate we were talking about the Ukraine um, not talking about obviously the troubles they got over there although we did obviously make some jokes and things as you might imagine but really we were just saying how brilliant uh, the Ukraine but also the sort of eastern bloc countries are at modeling and model kits and stuff you know I tip my hat to them and you know and I know it's controversial and I've had some people message me about it uh, I still stand by it I still think if you look at what um, ICM of this world, Mini Art, obviously Ed Art and things like that. The kits that they're producing now in the last 10 years 
are now on par or if not surpass the detail you would find on the sort of Japanese companies. So I'm talking Hasegawa uh, and obviously Tamiya and people like that. And they were the top tier or in my mind, in my opinion, the top tier companies out there. They're the ones you sort of, you know, you know they're going to be good, fantastically detailed, good fit, uh, pretty much AAA as I call them, you know. But now I think the Ukraine companies as well, and obviously with Eddard in there, uh, it's just that they are there. They are literally on their heels now. And I think very quickly they're going to surpass them if they haven't already in a lot of cases, let's face it. And I know some people have said, oh, well, you know, and, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, no, I stand by it. I think that, you know, Tamiya, Hasegawa seems to have pulled away uh, and things like that. They've plateaued. You know, we're seeing good kits from them. Don't get me wrong. They're releasing nice kits. Obviously, Tamiya's Phantom being the last one. But it's nothing special. It's nothing exciting. It hasn't got a, that level of detail that, to be honest, we're seeing on, especially the 72nd scale stuff, uh, from said companies like, obviously, you know, Eddard, uh, Armour Hobbies, people like that as well from that part of the world. They are, I think, better in those scales, certainly, than anything coming out of uh, uh, Japan and things like that. And then again, you've got companies like ICM, who for the last, say, 10 years, have turned themselves around and are producing what I call Cool, good all-round solid kits as in the kits themselves are beautifully done very well packaged you don't get flash or sync marks or anything else like that they're not over complicated kits either but you get everything in the box that you actually need so for instance fully detailed cockpit usually an engines are in there and a few bits of equipment again it's not fully detailed but it's got the great starting point for you to be able to add it or add aftermarket with ease uh, without having to do major surgery to a kit so what you've got is a really really good kit that makes a fantastic straight out of the box build but if you did want to go to town on it it wouldn't take much you know you could do a lot of it by scratch building plastic card lead wire photo etch scoff cuts things like that to really make it a proper triple a title but the price is always incredibly competitive and you know prices are going up across the board i know everyone's been saying icm are going up as well and i'm sure they will but that's because the world itself has gone silly and going through the roof at the moment with inflation so you know from a point of view of i still think good bang for buck type kit i still maintain you know icm is an easy go-to option so if you look at any of their more modern kits no problem and then as we were saying on last night's show even if you go back and look at some of their older kits you've got absolutely fantastic kits for very little money sub 15 pounds for a 30 second 48 scale kits and things like that for their older range they're not brilliant but they're halfway there so you can actually do a lot and then add to it and you know time and that you've saved yourself a good chunk of cash from buying the kit in the first place so again that was an interesting show great to have your feedback on it as well and obviously at the end of the show as well we were answering questions and all the bits and pieces that go into that one so if you want to see that you can see that over there click down in there and you can go off and grab that one and then that brings us bang up today to because it's not on here yet because I haven't actually put it in so we'll go videos uh the hurricane so we're back on with the hurricane as you've probably seen just in front of me so uh part four of this is up now so again and I'll show you in the kit in a moment but we've done a little bit of surgery because I wanted to show off that gorgeous engine in the front so we've cut off the front cowlings we've made some plastic card sort of you know formers uh, and areas down in here and then we've added detail to the clear parts and some of these other areas just to bring it to life right the way through then we've working on the, the actual uh, engine and on the wing spars and on with the actual radiator to to really get it together and there we go that's that one all done uh, down in there and it's really really coming together as you can see so that's coming together very very nicely at the moment and then again getting the wings on and then you can see just down in here here's our wings so we've got the guns installed we've got the one of the wings on at the moment going through the motions of that one just down in there and then as you can see we've actually got the fuselage is half together so this will be on uh, monday uh, probably i don't know monday or tuesday i think we're gonna have the next part of the uh f 18 up on monday so this will probably be with you next friday so i'll get the wings on it as well by then and everything else but as you can see it's looking really very very nice in there good job on these ones and to say we've done a little bit of weathering on these now so these do fit still so these can come along 
and just go in so that goes in there just like that if we wanted to put them in and then again we've got these top ones these cowlings up here and these fit in here as well still so we've got no problem with these and we've obviously put the bottom ones on and stuff so we're all looking very much the part so again and you know i know i've been harping on about kits recently but this is a really good example of being really pleasantly surprised now everyone's told me this was a good kit but seeing as this was trumpeter's early one from 2006 i wasn't expecting this to be as good as it is and again little things which are actually do you know what that's good job by trumpeter is that it's keyed so some of the parts you can only put them around one way because it's got like two holes one's bigger than the other or a different shape so again really really nice but we put these fuselage halves together about an hour ago and as you can see you know we haven't done any clean up on this but it's got fantastic joints there's no gaps there's no problems to all of this and again we've got obviously all the rudders to go on and things and it's really is looking very much the part so again the great thing is hopefully by mid next week this will be totally together then we'll be moving into obviously the paint stage getting into primer so forth and so on so definitely light at the end of the tunnel with both of these kits because i think most of the work is down obviously with the hornet sorting out those problems and that we've basically got that sorted now and again the hurricane is all together done the surgery we wanted to done the tidy up work things like that so yeah from my point of view a really good week pushed on quite heavily with both of these to get them to this stage and I really think by the end of next week, if not the you know, before, both of these will be totally built and ready for primer. Then we'll be moving into the paint stage and then obviously with weathering. And again, both of these we're going to be doing some really sort of interesting, hopefully find interesting weathering stuff. So again, a Hornet, you know, you, we've got options, but I'm probably going to go with a low vis version. So consequently, we do nice weather into it and all the rest of it, not like a cag bird or anything else. And the same with the Hurricane. So what we're going to be doing is funny enough, the Armour Hobby's little tiny Hurricane, the Mark 1 that we did, we're going to be doing something similar but in 30 seconds so we can show you how it transfers in scale uh, with doing these different ones as well so uh, yeah all in all very very good very happy with this week's work as we've been making our way through so again you can see all of those videos they're all up now if you want to go off and see those uh, and it'd be lovely if you did anyway uh we just got to have a quick word so two things we didn't mention yesterday was uh, PM Models has got a couple of pre-orders on some quite interesting stuff. So what we've got down in here is a couple of Dragon Reboxes by Hobby 2000. We've literally just got a week's notice on these to get our orders in uh, because they're, they're coming in very rapidly. So we need to get the orders in so we can uh, make sure we get our allocations. So if you are interested in the 48 scale, this is uh, the TA152. So it's the long nose, uh, thin wing version, long wing version. It's a Dragon Reebok, so it's a really nice kit and all the rest of it. So we've got the HO version down in there and we've got the H1 version as well. So we've got the two versions of those. But again, you need to pop your name down really, really quick for these because again these aren't going to hang around for very long the other thing as well is obviously you spoke about is the uh, 109s so again these are the uh, dragon versions but again these are the best in scale for the e version of the 109 so again we've got a couple of different ones down in there we've got an e3 we've got an e4 and we've got an e7 for the trop as well and again we've spoken to nathan about these and he was saying that these are the best for the e-type of the uh, 109s as well so it's definitely the best in scale for that again we haven't got very long to get the pre-order because closed because we need to put our order in and we want to make sure we get our allocation so again it's literally just it's going to be a week on this one so you've got until about next thursday to get your name down for it but hurry please because again we don't want anyone to lose out on those and again obviously get the discount on that as well all right so you can do that one uh, over on the PMs areas, obviously the new arrivals this week. Uh, various things haven't really changed because again we haven't had much new stuff in but we have got restocks of Mandalorians in now we have got restocks of the uh, UAZ vans there in as well and uh, we've got the Alma Hobbies uh, Wildcats in as well and a couple of the other bits and pieces down in this week so if you're up for any of those grab those now we are going to be doing something a little bit different with the special offers area so grab these whilst you can because we know we did say these are going to change but we've had a bit of an epiphany of how we're going to work this so uh, grab these as you are and what's going to be happening is we're going to be doing some uh, basically like a payday sale so it'll be at the end of each month so bigger discounts uh, hopefully more stock will be in here as well but it'll become a monthly thing instead of a weekly thing all right so we're slightly different but hopefully we can get you better prices for things uh, and again these damage box items things like that so again if you are after things like 
like Sherman's got a couple of nice options down in there as well. So, uh, and all the other kits as well. So some of them damage box ones, others are just on normal sale. So those trucks and things down in there. But again, that is going to be ending soon because we're going to be doing a new sort of format for that one. So if you are interested, um, get your name down and uh, get those picked out before it all changes. All right, so good to go on that one. The other thing as well I've just got to answer is people were talking about, uh, I've got to find them now because I've moved them all around now, our new range of washes which won't be out for a, another month yet. It's just that I haven't actually gone into full production for these things but these are the new line of washes that we're doing. So we've got a grey green, we've got an ivy green, we've got a moss green and also we've got a filth green. Uh, so as well we've got our new green, green range but again what's going to happen is they've got to go into manufacturing then they'll go out to all our stockists and once everybody's got them then they'll go for sale but that's going to be another month yet but I know lots of people have been messaging saying when are they going to be available as I say it's not quite yet want to get it all in position before we do that one but hopefully they'll be out I should think it'll be the beginning of March when those ones come along next month as well I'll get all the merch up onto the site it's all here as you know it's been here since December just I physically haven't had time to get it onto the site yet but I will do and then you'll be good to go with all of those you'll be able to get your merch next month we make our way through and that was it so we said really really busy week apologies thing like Tim Tim message about it saying about his order was late coming in and things like that again I'm very sorry it's just it's literally me myself and I it's tax time it's VAT time of the year as well at the end of the month I'm feeling pretty rough at the moment as well, quite ill. So it's just one of those things, just trying to get it all sorted and catch up with it. So big apologies. There is no gallery uh, at the end of the show this week. I will double it up and make it up to you next week. But literally, I just, I'm out of time. It's currently now uh, quarter to five and I've got to edit all of this yet and get it up. So uh, sorry, it's all a little bit late. But hopefully next week things will settle down. I'll be feeling a bit better and we can get back to normal. So anyway, until Monday, everybody, where you get the next part of the actual Hornet will be up with you. Happy modelling. Take care.